So I said, sell advertising during the day, have a fun job at night, keep me out of harm's way, make a little bit of money, but that's not the point. Yeah. The amusement park's fun. And lo and behold, I found out that in addition to the minimum wage, you got bonuses and a commission. And so if you could really sell, and I felt that this was really, you know, precursor because I was selling entertainment 25 cents at a time. Hmm. Huh, does that track to something I did early, later? Because I also ended up, after two years, I was pretty good. And, uh, and I've often thought that my amusement park experience was really my MBA. Because hmm. I had 150 kids working for me when they made me manager. Um, hiring, firing, you know, training, um, managing inventory, managing labor percentages, all that stuff. I mean, it was really the, the school of hard knocks. My, my boss was a real stickler. And, uh, you know, he'd work days and I'd work nights. But if there was a piece of paper in my pigeon, in my cubby, and it said, Nolan, You're in see trouble. me. I knew, I, I knew my life was over. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and, and so it turned out that I really found that I understood the economics of the coin-operated game business. I knew what the machines cost. I knew how, how much they had to earn. You knew what that. worked, what didn't work, because you're seeing, you're emptying the, the machines, I guess, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and then the magic thing happened in which a friend of mine, um, a fraternity brother, said, meet me at the engineering lab at 1 o'clock tomorrow night. Hmm. He says, I'm going to blow your socks off. I thought, no, that's kind of weird. But wanting to have my socks blown off, so I thought that was a good idea. I went over. And he had jammed the lock on the computer room door. Uh, in those days, it was raised floor. They had the computers on all the time. And, uh, and the lights were turned off. I thought that was a little strange. No, no big problem. But we went over, and there was a display about this big round, green on black, vector display. And we played Space War. Hmm. <clears throat> this was approximately 1965, 66. And uh, Steve Russell at MIT, three years prior, had written a game called Space War. And it was basically ported onto anything that Deck Computer had that had any kind of display. They were all vector displays in those days. They were basically modified uh, radar terminals from the Second World War, but that's, that's just another story for another time. And, uh, and I was fascinated, and I thought to myself, if I could put this game in the amusement park hmm. and put a quarter slot on it, I'd make a lot it's of money. It's gonna make money. And then you divide 25 cents a play, three minutes a game, into a million dollar computer, the math didn't work at all. <laughs> but I thought to myself, you know, someday. Hmm. <laughs> and it did. Just double your profits. <laughs> and so uh, we ended up with a good game. The ball was going fast, the paddle was small, you had to be really good yeah. to keep it going very long. And uh, there we had it. And you take, you take the first two units, right? You take them down to a, to well, a the first, first one, unit. The first unit I took, took to Chicago to see if I could get them to accept it from a licensing standpoint. Mm. What did they say? They said, not sure, because it was only a two-player game. And all coin-operated games had to have a one-player game. That was the rule mm. at the time. And the one-player version of Pong was not that fun, just bouncing against the damn wall. Um, and so they said, let, let us think about it. And uh, just before I got on the airplane to come back, 
you've heard the story about the pawn game filling up with quarters and not taking any more. That happened while I was in Chicago. Hmm. And Al told me about that on the airplane. And so on the airplane, hmm. I thought, got thinking about it, and I said, you know, we can build this thing. Hmm. And I figured out we had just enough money to build 13. And that bothered me, because I thought that was an unlucky number. Um, so we built 12. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, the cabinet was ugly. The monitors were cheap old GE, you know. Everything was wrong with it, but they sold instantly. 